Global cannabis sales rose 48% 2019 over 2018 and reached the total global sales. And we're talking about legal, traceable uh, transactions here of marijuana. They reached $15 billion in global sales in 2019. Again, 48%. That's a 48% increase of uh, year over year from 2018 to 2019. In 2020, those sales increased 64% and rose to $24.6 billion globally. See a trend here? Conservative estimates say that the cannabis, marijuana, that legal industry globally is supposed to experience over 14% annual growth rate from 2021 through 2028. And North America accounts for 91% of that production. So the question becomes, how do you make money with this? Now, for years, decades in the United States, there has been a stigma surrounding marijuana. And some of the stigma is for good reason. Some of the stigma uh, really has no basis in fact. The reason why right now, you may not want to involve yourself in the point of sale legal marijuana business or legal cannabis business, there are two main reasons. Number one, the CBD uh, market is just oversaturated. Everybody's selling CBD, CBD this, CBD that, and there's no real uh, differentiating factor in a lot of those products, okay? So, it's oversaturated. You're getting into competition is good. Competition is an indis, indication that there is an industry there, that there is a viable money making opportunity there. But at this point, that industry may be too fractured for anyone to get into it and really uh, wade through all of the different regulations and whatnot, and then come out really at the end of the day making any money. That's the one reason. The second reason is the regulation and the legality. And this is like a little quagmire, uh, big time gray area with all of that right now. About 13 states still have marijuana as totally illegal. You cannot use it uh, legally for medicinal or uh, recreational purposes. So that complicates matters when you are potentially crossing state lines. To add to that the fact that the federal government does not recognize the legality or the decriminalization of marijuana just yet. Now, Chuck Schumer, the head of the Senate, Senate Majority Leader rather, he uh, came out recently and said that they are going to be working. He's going to introduce some bills that would uh, work toward uh, changing federal marijuana policy. Now, let me say this. If they're going to do that, uh, then... What we also need to see concurrent with that is the release and expungement of any non-violent marijuana related crime, because it would be a shame if people have had their lives, uh, you know, negatively affected by a felony record on something on a business that the United States is now involved in. And I would hope that the states that have made this uh, substance legal would, you know, do the same thing where non-violent possession of marijuana, uh, those charges have, have occurred. But anyway, uh, Schumer's talking about going ahead and making uh, some policy changes to uh, marijuana as it relates to the federal statutes. Now, one of the biggest things that uh, is on the table with regard to that is a proposal to... Make it such that banks, federally uh, regulated banks, can recognize transactions that have taken place as a result of marijuana sales. Right now, a lot of these businesses are purely cash businesses. Even in states where this is legal, that presents yet another uh, detrimental aspect to getting directly involved in that business. Because that cash-heavy component, that cash-heavy characteristic, leads to a lot of these dispensaries being preyed upon 
uh, if you know and you're criminally minded, you know that this business uh, has a lot of cash, doesn't have, uh, you know, doesn't do business in terms of credit cards because they can't get the merchant account because the merchant account is from a company that is federally regulated uh, in the banking industry, then you know, hey, this is where the cash is. This is where I go to uh, get the money. So it has led to uh, some criminal activity in these uh, cash heavy businesses. So there is a proposal on the table. The proposal is the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act. They're calling it the SAFE Act. It's been introduced or reintroduced uh, in the Senate because they've been trying to do this for a few years now. It's been reintroduced by Senators Jeff Merkley from Oregon and Steve Daines from Montana. Now, uh, Daines is a Republican. Uh, Merkley is a Democrat, so it has some bipartisan support, and it also has been bubbling up in the House of Representatives. So what the SAFE Act will do is it's going to enable the marijuana dispensaries, people that deal in this cannabis business, to obtain banking services. And it's going to provide protection for those banks uh, that cooperate with legal cannabis companies. Right now, again, that federal uh, space is very gray and so banks don't want to deal with it once you pass the safe act it will go a long way toward legitimizing the industry and helping commerce really flow there are a lot of people that just don't want to deal with it right now because of where it is uh in terms of the federal regulatory environment it's just uh too much of a gray area now that brings me to how you can make money in this business, potentially. We talked about the growth rate of uh, cannabis sales just a moment ago. We saw that it uh, jumped 64% in terms of global sales, 2020 over 2019, right? So the growth potential is there. Now, people are saying, well, that happened because of COVID. And I don't care why it happened, it happened. And if new customers were introduced to it for whatever reason, now keep in mind, a lot of the states that have legalized it have done so for medicinal purposes. So if we're seeing an increase in usage as a result of research saying, hey, okay, this is another application, a medical application, we can use this, then that just represents an opportunity to see more revenue coming out of this industry. All right. So. How do you make money off of it? We're gonna look at companies that actually uh, are in the space kinda now and are positioned to really make billions off of it over the course of time. Now, you could say, again, I'm gonna open up a, a little dispensary in my neighborhood when this SAFE Act, if it passes, that'll make it easier for me, safer for me. Uh, you could do that. And you would probably, if you managed it correctly, if the environment was right, if you had the clientele, then you're going to, you're always going to make more money uh, at your own business, at the business you own, if it's properly managed. Your return on your investment is always going to be potentially much higher than it would be if you were just a passive investor in a stock. But let's talk about two companies that are kind of in that space right now, that marijuana space and how you might take a look at these companies, evaluate them, and see if that's somewhere you want to go. First, let's talk about Altria. Now, Altria used to be Philip Morris, the cigarette company. Now, they are uh, they call themselves Altria, part of a brand reorganization. Uh, that Philip Morris brand was played out because of the bad press on cigarettes. But now they're Altria. And Altria is not only researching the actual... Uh, usage of direct marijuana, but they've got uh, some research going on also in devices that facilitate marijuana use. So the vapes and uh, other devices as well. They're looking at patents and whatnot. So they're really uh, spending money, not only in the research and development part, but also, and this is where it gets very interesting, they're spending money in lobbying D.C., to relax the regulation on marijuana. Now, Philip Morris, if anybody is experienced in lobbying DC, it's Philip Morris because of all of the 
uh, different suits that they've gone through with tobacco. They have a long history of going back and forth with legislators, regulators, and in the courts. So they've got the experience there. If anybody can make this happen, uh, it is them. So Altria, take a look at that company. Understand a little bit more deeply than we can go into in this video what they're doing in that marijuana space. Okay, they're approaching it from a, a very, uh, you know, high altitude. And the other thing is when we talk about the global sales of marijuana, remember 91% of the growth is coming out of North America. That's a company that is positioned. They already know how to sell uh, a product internationally. So if they, they, they've got the money, they've got the resources to delve into this in a global way. So take a look at Altria and see uh, what they're doing in that space. They are delving into it heavily. The next company is Abvi. Abvi is a pharmaceutical company. Now, as we just discussed, there are a lot of states that have made it legal for uh, people to use medical or medicinal marijuana. Abvi is a pharmaceutical company. You can look, Abby's one, they've been doing some things in the space, uh, research into uh, applications uh, where cannabis may be useful medically. Uh, so you can bet that if you look around at the other pharmaceutical companies like Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Pfizer, uh, Bayer, then you're probably going to see some of the same things. It's no way these companies are going to ignore a market that is growing by the leaps and bounds that marijuana is growing at. And you can best believe that these big companies are also going to join Altria and start to, they've already started, lobbying the state and federal governments to relax the rules around marijuana. And the government has every incentive to do so. Why? Because we just racked up $30 trillion in debt and we're talking about racking up $3 trillion more in an infrastructure bill. We did a video on that uh, here recently. So when the chips are down, when the country or the state or the local government, when governments owe a lot of money, they relax uh, <laughs> their high ideals on vice. We've seen it in gambling. We saw it right here in Maryland. A lot of the legislatures prior to us having casino gambling, they stood on their high horses and decried uh, casino gambling as immoral. Um, and then, you know, when they needed more revenue, suddenly it became okay. So just to give you some perspective, uh, the alcohol market domestically here in the U.S., uh, is worth $252 billion. These are numbers as of 2019. Uh, the tobacco market is, is worth $46.16 billion. Lottery, $91 billion. And casino gambling, $41 billion. So why not add another vice? And let me say this, because a lot of people uh, are like the guys in the Senate and the House. These are older uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I mean significantly older. We got a lot of 80 year olds in government, federal government. And they um, have been inculcated into uh, a reefer madness mindset. Reefer madness was this movie that came out in the 30s where uh, it basically said that if you, you know, smoked a joint, you were going to turn into a, uh, like a zombie, like something off of 28 days later. Okay, go watch it. It's on YouTube. Um, they've been uh, inculcated into that type of mindset and they're not going to depart from it. So you need new and younger folk in there that are going to uh, not have that same stigma. There is no concrete evidence that marijuana is a gateway drug. The gateway is depending on the people you hang around when you indulge in marijuana. Uh, I know plenty of people who are uh, in every aspect of industry uh, that are doing extremely well in their uh, endeavors. And you wouldn't ever be able to tell that they indulged in marijuana, but recreationally they do. And they've done it for years and they don't touch any other drug. A couple of them don't even mess with alcohol. 
Me, myself, I get high off of thinking about the mysteries of the universe. I wrote a book on it, Quantum Dawn, still available on um, Amazon if you'd like to check it out. But uh, this represents a possible money-making opportunity that you can invest in. I would suggest you do so, if you're going to do so, do so at the high level, um, initially at least. Let all of the regulatory bugs get worked out in this before you uh, go in too deeply. Altria, for example, they uh, do other things. So if the marijuana thing falls flat for them uh, for a few years, you're gonna have other sources of revenue from that company. The same with AbbVie, all right? as opposed to putting money into a dispensary uh, where, you know, it is subject to the state laws, the ambiguity of the federal laws, and doesn't have the legal or uh, lobbying resources of a big company like Altria or AbbVie or Johnson & Johnson or any of those guys. All right. Think about it. I'll talk to you soon.